You want to be a full stack dev? Let's find out. So you've heard the words full stack dev, you've seen it posted inside of some job postings online and recruiters have reached out asking you if you're a full stack dev and you're wondering, am I a full stack dev or what is a full stack dev and should I even be one? What is a full stack dev? A full stack developer is a developer who can develop on the client side as well as the back end of an application. I'm not going to give you the exact definition you're gonna find online. I'm gonna give you my understanding as someone who's been developing software for over 20 years now of what a full stack dev is. Full stack, meaning that you can actually develop the front end and back end of an application. So what is the front end? Now the front end could be a bunch of different things. It could be a website. It could be just a front end static application, you know, a single page app, like a React application or a Vue application. It could be a mobile client, like an Android app or an iOS app, or it could be something in Flutter or any other platform technology that you have been working with at that time. What about back end? Back end is going to be defined as something that is on the back end. Usually it's on a server. The server is running somewhere in the cloud. It could be on AWS, your own server infrastructure, DigitalOcean, wherever you might be running. And that can be written in any number of languages. It could be written inside of Java or Kotlin. It could be written inside of Go. It could be written in Node.js with JavaScript. It could be written in .NET, PHP, Rails, Python, you name it. If it's a popular programming language, you can most likely write a backend in it. So the concept of a full stack developer is someone who can develop a front end application as well as a back end application. So the real question is, do these type of people actually exist? Yes, they do. In fact, it's probably pretty common to find a full stack developer out in the wild. In fact, I would consider myself a full stack developer. Now, however, one thing that you are going to notice out in the wild is that when you see job postings or people referencing full stack developers, a lot of the time they are referencing JavaScript developers. The reason for that is because web technologies such as websites, etc., are built with JavaScript on the front end and you can write the code on the server in JavaScript as well. Now, what do I mean by the front end component? The front end component is written in HTML and CSS. And of course, to control that dynamically, you use JavaScript to do that. It's the de facto language to control the front end. Now, of course, you can do TypeScript, but we're not talking about that here. So when you do see a full stack developer position, very often it will just be talking about JavaScript the majority of the time. And the reason for that is, is you can write the front end in HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, but you can also write the back end in JavaScript as well using technologies like Node.js. So when you see these postings, it's very often because it's one language that's crossing both between the back end and front end. Now, please note that doesn't mean that you're not going to have some level of context switching going on. The development paradigm in perhaps something like React or Vue is vastly different than how you're going to implement something in an API with Node.js and perhaps the Express framework. There's a bunch of different implementations and a bunch of different ways that you're going to make sure that you build software appropriately for the back end and for the front end. The term full stack is going to be one that's used because if you're a JavaScript developer, a lot of companies, recruiters, etc., just feel that you can work on both because you are writing the same language. Now, I'm gonna argue that's not actually the case. There are many front-end developers who write JavaScript all day who do not and cannot write quality back-end code. Now, that doesn't mean that they can't learn, it's just something that they haven't done and have not developed that skill yet. Very often, like I said, you'll see it because it's gonna be a front-end and back-end system written both in JavaScript. A lot of companies would like to hire as few people as they can simply just to save money, and if you can have a developer that works on the front end and back end who can work on both, you're going to have a much more agile team. Now, of course, there's caveats to that and depends on the company size, what they're trying to do and the product that they're trying to build. All right, so we've answered a couple of questions. Number one, what is full stack development? And number two, why is it usually always referenced in a web development context? What I want to also bring up is it doesn't have to be just web development. Full stack, in my opinion, is going to be if you can write the front end and the back end, you might develop it in two different platforms completely all together. This is something very common that I will do. I might write a back end in Node.js or Ruby on Rails, but then the front end, I might decide to stick completely with native implementations with Android or iOS and use Kotlin or Swift or whatever to build those applications. So I'm developing a front end application in one language and I'll be in a different language on the back end. In my opinion, you are now a full stack developer if you can do both. Before we go any further, let's hop into the third topic of should you consider yourself or should you want to try to be a full stack developer? Now, what I would like to do is set up some pros and some cons of being a full stack developer. So starting with the pros, if you're going to be someone who's working in multiple different technologies, one thing you're going to notice is that you become a generalist naturally. You're going to start working 
with one technology on the front end and you're gonna work with a different technology on the back end. You're gonna be exposed to database technology, different databases from SQL Server, Postgres, MySQL, you name it. And you might have to work with all different types of these and interact with them on the server and then create APIs and then expose them. And you know, you're working with JSON and XML, different data types, configuration files in YAML. And then of course you have your client application you're building in perhaps a web technology like React, or maybe you're building an Android application and you're using Kotlin and you're using Jetpack Compose. So you're gonna have a bunch of different things you're working with. So you're going to be exposed to them at all different levels. And you're gonna become a generalist naturally because you've touched a lot of things. Now there's a very popular quote here and I'm gonna read this quote and uh, we'll talk about it. Quote is, a jack of all trades is a master of none, but oftentimes, better than a master of one. So think about that. This can be a benefit to you. And we'll talk about how this can also be a con in a moment as well. You're becoming a generalist. So you have a bunch of different opportunities that are going to be available to you. If you have experience in Node.js or Ruby on Rails or .NET because you've built the back end in it or had to work with it, and you've also built the front end in perhaps something like React or Android, well, now you've ex been exposed to a bunch of different things. So as you start looking for more opportunities in your career and your work environment, you're going to be able to work at various different places because you have that experience. Now, this is especially true if you're freelancing or consulting, simply because not every company is going to fit the mold of where you maybe had worked prior. There might be one company that does everything in JavaScript. Their back end is in Node.js with the Express framework. Their front end is with JavaScript and with React. And so you're working just in that environment. You might move to the next company. They also work with React, but however, their back end is written in Python. So you might have to be exposed to Python. Now, if you've had that experience in Python and you have that experience in JavaScript, well, now you can actually open up more doors as a generalist to help come in and solve various different problems. And you'll also be able to learn and kind of see the similarities and differences of technologies as you grow. Now, the other thing that's great about being a generalist in the pros column is that you can basically build anything you want when you are a full stack dev. If you have an idea or you're working at a client or your company and you have an idea of something you'd like to build and you have the option to implement the front end and the back end, you can just go do that. If you don't know how to implement the back end and you only know how to implement the front end, well, that becomes a problem when you can do the full stack, you can pretty much build whatever you want. You are the general contractor of developers. You know how to install the walls, you know how to install the wiring, the plumbing, build the roof, everything, and now you can build a house. Now it may not be a specialty house that's a Frank Lloyd Wright type of architecture, but it's going to work for whatever you're building. This can offer you a bunch of opportunities when you are gonna be working with smaller companies such as startups that need people who are nimble and have multiple skill sets. And furthermore, if you're building your own products and you wanna develop your own application, your own SaaS app, whatever, you can now build everything yourself or at least know how everything is working. So when you're working with other teammates that work in those technologies, you can help solve those problems in those given areas. When you're working as a full stack developer, there's always something new to learn. Even if you stay just as a specialist inside of one technology, there's always something to learn in that new technology. Because let's face it, two weeks ago, before this, something else came out that you didn't know about. In two weeks, there's gonna be something else that comes out in a given technology that we didn't know about. There's new libraries, there's new technologies, there's new frameworks always being developed. So even if you stay as a specialist, you have something to learn. But even being a generalist, that pool opens up even more. Maybe you decide, hey, I've worked in Python. I've built a Python API. Well, now since I know Python, Python is very popular in academia. It's also very popular in data science. Well, now maybe you want to move into data science. You already know how Python works. You know how the ecosystem, you already have a step ahead where you can start working into that. Now, that doesn't mean use Python. Perhaps I like to use Ruby on Rails and I like to use Ruby on Rails because it makes me productive to build my SaaS app. But maybe you like to use Kotlin in the back end and you can then start building different things in the back end with you know ktor or various different back end infrastructures long story short is when you're a generalist there's many opportunities out there for you to grow in any direction in which you want and you're not pigeonholed into just one technology you get to experience a wide breadth of different things out there okay let's be honest being a generalist or a full stack dev isn't everything it's cracked up to be sometimes so what are some of the cons one of the big cons is going to be context switching if you've got to develop the front end and the back end of an application it's very very easy to get confused when you're working on the front end and then you're working on the back end. You might need, oh, hey, I need this extra field to be sent down from the back end. So you go to the back end code and you hack that away. And maybe that's written in Python. Maybe it's written in Rails. And then that's sending the payload down as JSON. And then back on the client, you realize, oh, you know what? Oh, now I'm in Kotlin and you're typing over here in Kotlin. Or you're in Java and you're, you've got to use semicolons. And your back end language doesn't use semicolons. It uses tabs to help, you know, with Python to help delineate space and just how the, that's how the program works. The front end is written in perhaps Java. And now you've got to use semicolons. The problem with context switching is before you know it, one time you're gonna get a compilation error on either side and you're not gonna know why this is happening. Back end's not working or the front end's not working and you can't figure it out. The code looks right. And then you realize, oh, 
I added a semicolon on some Python code. I shouldn't have done that or vice versa. I forgot a semicolon over here in Kotlin. Now this is also one of the reasons why a lot of companies like to have full stack developers in one language. Because if you're gonna use JavaScript on the front end and the back end, well, the language is basically the same. You just have to know how to implement it differently to build an API or to build a front end. There is some context switching that can happen. You can mitigate that various different ways. We won't get into that here, but it's something you do have to consider. There's always a lot to learn inside of a generalist environment. The cons column, that's the negative, is there's a lot to learn, but there's a lot to learn anywhere. So it really depends on where you want to focus your energy. Do you really want to niche down and become a specialist in one given area? And how low do you want to go? Do you want to be a cryptography security engineer inside of the Android ecosystem that only focuses on low level C integration? I'm sure there's companies out there that would pay you good money for it. It's just that they're not going to be that plentiful. On the same token, if you flip that on its side, all right, well, now I'm going to be a generalist and just study cryptography everywhere. Where do you start? Do you go into Python? Do you do in .NET? Do you go to Java? There's just a bunch of different things out there. So you have to be able to stay focused. And as a generalist and as a full stack dev, you can be interested in a million things. You may not even know where to start or what to learn next. And you can almost end up in a analysis paralysis of decisions that you can make. So you have to be very careful with your time and make sure you're focusing it accordingly. Now, probably the biggest con for or being a full stack dev. If you're a full stack dev and you're only doing JavaScript on the front end and back end, and that's all you do, then this might not apply because you're using JavaScript on both sides. But let's say you're using technologies on different areas. And even the JavaScript on both sides thing here can be a little hairy. The problem is that you don't become a specialist. This can be a good or a bad thing. When you are a specialist, you can become highly paid as a specialist in Android or iOS or back end infrastructure. Maybe you're a specialist in Kubernetes. That could be a great thing and you can get paid a lot of money for it. However, if you're a generalist, maybe you've just figured out how to fire up Kubernetes, get it running with a couple of Docker scripts. And that's all you need to know how to do because once you've got the application built, you can kind of ship that over to the DevOps engineers and have them implement it. The problem is when you're not a specialist, there's a bunch of different things that are out there. So you have to know what your focus area is. For me, I consider myself a full stack dev. Now I do have a specialty, most people would say, and that would be Android. And that is simply because I've been doing it for so long. I've written some books on it, done a lot of videos on it, and just have a lot of knowledge in the space. But I do still still consider myself a full stack dev. In fact, the last couple of years, I've spent half of my time inside of writing an API inside of Node.js, as well as a front end in React, as well as my other half of the time spent in Android to keep up a breadth with the current technologies. The challenge then being is, where do you focus your time? And do you want to become a specialist? Do you only care about the front end? Do you not want to be able to help with the back end? And again, this can be a pro or a con. So if you are going to be a full stack dev, most likely you're not going to be a specialist in one given area. Again, the JavaScript front end and back end thing, that might be a situation where you are expert in both. But again, the way the technology is implemented, maybe with React and Express, those implementations are too different. The only thing that's common there is the language. So you're just gonna have less context switching. Okay, so that pretty much wraps it up. So the real question here is, should you even think about being a full stack dev? And is that something you wanna do? This decision is ultimately going to be left up to you. What do I think? I think being a full stack developer is probably one of the best decisions you can make for yourself and for your career. And the reason for that is, is you're gonna make yourself more valuable. Now the challenges with that are, if you're a beginner, I do not recommend this. Simply because learning one thing at a time is going to give you the best bang for your buck. If you're only learning front end development, maybe it's web development, or maybe you're learning Android or iOS, stick with that until you have the fundamentals and you understand how to develop software. After you maybe have a couple of years of experience, you can start dabbling in other technologies and maybe build yourself a small API in another language. Then you're gonna be able to have the fundamentals nailed down in the basics, and then you can move on from there. But after you have that, I definitely think it's something that everybody should try to do a couple of times in their career and just develop and broaden their skill set. What that does, it's going to make you much more valuable at companies. If you can show up at a company, develop the front end of an application and also say, hey, yeah, you know what? I know how to develop on the back end too. You now become more valuable to the company simply because you have more skills that can help them in a wide array of areas. I hope that helps. If you have any questions uh, or comments, please leave them in the comments below and I'll reply when I have time. Thanks for watching.